What is going on, CF students? Can we make some noise for our God? Come on, come on, in all of our campuses, wherever you are watching this, come on, let's just make some noise for our God. Our God is a good God, a loving God. Today is an amazing day. Day, man. If you don't know me by any chance, my name is Rob. I serve as the student director at the West Kendall campus. Shout out to my West Kendall peeps watching this. And wherever you are watching this, man, welcome. Whether this is your first time, whether you've been here for a long time, or maybe somebody just brought you into one of our services, or somebody just pulled this up on their phone and you're not watching this, man, hi to you. You've joined us in an incredible time. We're in a brand new month, right? We're in the month of May. Crazy things are coming our way, right? School is about to end soon. Summer is around the corner. But we have started this incredible series called Not Okay. Not Okay. Last week, Gabe from our Doral campus, man, he brought it. He spoke about, man, trusting the Lord uh, in our times of stress and anxiety. And it was an amazing message. If you want to know more about that, go watch it as well later on. But today we are talking about something that I think every single one of us knows and can relate 100%. And you know what that is? Rejection. Rejection. I think that's something that every single human being can relate to. Like, man, rejection doesn't always feel the best. And if we're being honest, nobody really likes to be rejected. But with that being said, I want to go straight into God's word because I believe there's some truth to be found when we have to go through our lives as children of God, and maybe in your life right now, in, in so many decisions that some of you may be having to make as you're changing to schools, maybe friends, situations, and you're thinking about this rejection, and maybe you are feeling that stress and that anxiety, I want you to find some comfort, not in me, not in what I have to say, but in what God has to say. So let's go to God's word real quick. We're going to be in just two passages. John 6, 36 goes like this, and it says, But you haven't believed in me even though you have seen me. However, those the Father has given me will come to me, and I will never reject them. These are Jesus' words. For I have come down from heaven to do the will of God who sent me not to do my own will, and this is the will of God, that I should not lose even one of all those he has given me, but that I should raise them up at the last day. And John 15, 18 says this, If the world hates you, Know that it has hated me before it has hated you. Real quick, wherever you are watching this from, can you just pray with me real quick before we continue going? Heavenly Father, we just come before you, God, during this time. Lord, teach us your word, God. Replace me, God. It is your word that saves, that speaks. God, use this time to just edify us, grow us closer to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. All right. So, see, since we're talking about rejection... I'm going to be very honest and, and very open with you, but I first want to ask you guys a question. Just really quick, by a show of hands, ha have any single one of you guys maybe been rejected before or faced rejection? Show of hands, show of hands. Maybe by a girl, maybe by a guy, maybe you wrote them a letter or something on Valentine's Day not too long ago, you know, something crazy. Maybe prom's coming up, you ask somebody to prom, you got rejected. Maybe some job applications, maybe you applied to like McDonald's or Chick-fil-A and they were like, Nah, you know, you can't do it here. Maybe for some of you, even with school applications, right? I know during this time, like, you are getting those deadlines in. Maybe for some of you, your dream school has maybe said no, you know? Or maybe you're still waiting for a letter, and maybe you're thinking, like, man, are they going to reject me? Am I going to be able to be accepted into this school? Listen, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Rejection happens to everyone. It happens to everyone. It's not a... Uh, you know, maybe it's going to happen. It's more of a when it happens. And I'm not saying this to make anybody's stress or anybody's anxiety go up. Okay, I really hope I'm not discouraging anyone and, and hurting anyone. But I really want you to understand this truth, which I think can help us a lot when we have to face rejection in our lives, is that someone or something is going to reject us eventually. Right? Something or someone is going to reject us eventually. And if we're being honest... We reject things. Rejection isn't always bad, right? Like, we reject certain foods, right? If, you're, if you don't like to eat healthy, man, you're like, put all the sauces on that thing, man. Put, put, put extra cheese on that thing, right? Like, we, we don't reject some things, right? Some things are, are good to reject, right? Like, can you imagine if you never rejected anything and said yes and accepted everything to your life? God bless, right? Like, you would have a very interesting life. You should probably have a reality TV show because that would be incredible to watch, right? 
So rejection, as much as maybe we are scared of it, we don't like it, it brings anxiety out of us, it brings stress into our lives, that's one side of it. And it could actually also be a really good thing for building us up, for learning wisdom. But I'm going to be honest, I don't know if you guys have heard of this. It's something called rejection therapy. Say this with me. Say rejection therapy. Now, rejection therapy is not you going to talk to a therapist and basically telling them, like, this is how I was denied by my girl today or by my guy today or by my mom today or by my sister. Like, that's not, that's not what it is, okay? Rejection therapy is actually something that some man named Jai Jang created a few years back. I think it's about seven to, years, seven to eight years back. And so this young man, he decided for a hundred days, CF students, get this, for a hundred days that he was going to go to random strangers and ask them outrageous, absolutely crazy requests on the spot. I'm talking about like something small to something big. Like, like, and he recorded this for a hundred days. And honestly, he did it, he did it so that he could get better at facing rejection. He did it because he was like, bro, I'm a timid, I'm very scared of this, but I wanna face rejection. I wanna face rejection. So he literally put himself out of his comfort zone for a hundred days and went to a, a, a hundred random strangers and basically asked them requests or questions that were guaranteeing him to get a no. Now here's what's really funny. Sometimes the people said yes. <laughs> Sometimes they did yes and, and he, he was blessed by some of the crazy requests. But I wanna show you a quick clip of just one day, one day in his life where he was doing this challenge. In fact, take a look at this video. I'm gonna try to borrow $100 from a stranger. Uh, this is very tough, but let's give a shot. Excuse me, do you think I can borrow a hundred dollars from you? No. No? Why? All right. No, okay, sorry, thanks. All right, that wasn't too bad. Um, I didn't know he was a security or someone. I don't know, he just sits there. He looks like a security guard. Uh, I thought he might pull off a gun or just yell at me or something, but he just said, no, okay, that's not too bad. So first day was the success. That's pretty crazy, right? Like, I don't know how many of you would try that in, in your own life. Like, man, like that guy just randomly went to somebody and was like, yo, can I get $100? <laughs> and, and, you know, he had to face like the no and like, what are you talking about? Man, it was crazy. But man, I I'm telling you, if you ever want to look at it more, go on YouTube. They're all still there. One of my favorite ones was that he asked a random person in his house, like, hey, can I, can I practice soccer in your backyard? And the person actually said yes. Go watch that video. It's actually really, really funny how the pictures and everything come out. But I want to keep going towards this, okay? Because I want to let you all know. I want us to start us off like this. This is our first point for tonight, CF students. Rejection is not your enemy. I'm going to say it to you again. Rejection is not your enemy, okay? I know that maybe you're thinking about rejection like, man, rejection is scary, it stops me, it, it discourages me, I don't like it. I absolutely get that. Those are real things. But it's not your enemy, okay? It is not your enemy. I want to go back to what Jesus is saying here in God's word, see of students, because there's so much good that can be found in here. Look at this, John 6, 36, one more time. But you haven't believed in me, even though you have seen me. However... Those the Father has given me will come to me, and I will never, everybody say reject. Say it with some faith, say it like you mean it, come on, say reject. Reject them, for I have come down from heaven to do the will of God who sent me, not to do my own will. And this is the will of God, that I should not lose even one of all those he has given me, but that I should raise them up at this last day. All right, so... This is amazing what we just find in God's truth right now. Because you know what these verses are letting us know, CF students? Is that yes, there could be a day, CF students, where somebody or something 
rejects you. And yes, it's completely normal to feel discouraged, to feel sad, to feel worried, to feel anxious. But that shouldn't stop us from still trying. That shouldn't stop us from still getting out of our comfort zones. And that shouldn't stop us from actually believing that we, we, that we may not get rejected, right? And if you look closely at those verses, Jesus actually guarantees something to us. Those that have given our lives to him, that are saved by his grace, that we belong to him. And you know what he tells us? He's saying, listen, I'm never going to reject you. God will never reject you. And maybe this is something that for a lot of us, we forget. But if God who created everything and holds everything in his hands and in the power of his hands and knows all things and is the creator of all things and is so good and gracious and loving towards us, if you really start to think about that, meditate on that, and remember that, that that's something that you have and have access for and God is on your side, who cares if you get rejected by anybody else? Just think about that. Who cares if you didn't get accepted into the Dream College? And I'm not saying this to discourage anyone because I know getting accepted to FIU, UM, UCF, all those schools are amazing and it's great. But just because somebody else or something else didn't see the value, the worth in you, doesn't actually define that about you. Just because maybe a girl or a guy or a relationship rejected you or didn't see the value and the worth in you doesn't make you that. You are worth more than you know because God gave his only son for you so that you would never feel rejected, so that you would know you are fully loved, fully accepted, fully wanted. And maybe today you just need to be reminded of that as you think about rejection or as you're maybe struggling with rejection. That if God who has all really authority and all the final says about you and who you're meant to be, don't let anybody else, don't let a relationship, a girl, a guy, a job, a career, take that ownership from you. And I also want to let you know that there's one person that probably relates to us the most when it comes to rejection. And that's Jesus himself. That is Jesus himself. Real quick, can you write this down as your, first, uh, as your next two subpoints, letters A and B? Write this down as letter A. Jesus himself was rejected. All right, Jesus himself was rejected. We're going to look at it, but he was rejected. And B, Jesus overcame rejection time and time again while he was here on earth for us, for you and me. Write these down. These are good things to remember and keep, not just in your notes, but in your heart as well, see of students. All right, man, see of students, one, one more verse. John 15, 18 says this, if the world hates you, get this, if the world hates you, this is Jesus' words, know that it has hated me before it hated you. Now, see of students, one of the things that I love doing in my own personal time as I have my quiet time and spending time with God is seeing like in the scriptures, Jesus' life about how many things he actually went through and related to us that we deal on a daily basis. And one of those things is rejection. And maybe you're like, Robert, when was Jesus rejected? Well, Jesus was rejected by his own family. There were already crazy infos about how he came into this world, right, with his, his mom Mary and then the Holy Spirit impregnating her. And that created tension between his siblings. Like we see in the scriptures that even his own siblings didn't believe in him and didn't like him, right? He was rejected by them. Think about it. Jesus spent time with 12 disciples, loved them, cared about them, showed them who he was. And Judas would betray him. Peter would deny him. His disciples would leave him and abandon him in his time of desperation and need when he was about to die for us. He was rejected by a whole country, Rome. Right? Rome didn't even like him. Later on in history, you find out that if anybody wanted to believe in Jesus or, or declare that Jesus was king, they would be executed for this faith. And let's be honest. There are days that even you and I reject Jesus when we sin and we fall short 
and we choose not to believe in him and his promises and we choose to do things our own way. Believe me when I tell you that Jesus, the son of God, who is perfect in everything, he knows exactly what it's like to be rejected. He knows exactly what it's like to be rejected. But that didn't stop him. That didn't stop him. In fact, I want to go to this verse again, just so you sit on it one more time. John 6, 38, it says this, for I have come down from heaven to do the will of God who sent me, not to do my own will. And this is the will of God, that I should not lose even one of all of those he has given me, but that I should raise them up at the last day. You know, I think it's amazing, see of students, when you think about like, man, Jesus was rejected and he is literally perfection, the son of God. Like there, there was nothing to hate him really about. If people hated him, it was because like, man, you're just too cool. You're too good. You're too amazing, right? And he was trying to do things not in his own will, but his father's will. And so you got to use a little bit of theology here. But God knew, God knew that by sending Jesus into this world, people were going to hate him. People were going to dislike him. Now, I'm not calling anybody Jesus, right? Because we're far from Jesus, even though we belong to him. But I'm just letting you know, what if God wants to use some rejections and rejection moments in your life, see of students, to build your faith so you can trust God that he's in control, that he still has a good plan for your life, that maybe you didn't get into the school, you didn't get into that relationship, things didn't work out to your favor. But it doesn't matter because God is still the one writing your story. When I think about those things, see of students, it really helps me to understand like, man, rejection, even though it can hurt and it's scary and it can be sad and discouraging, it makes it a lot more easier to bear when I know that God still has a good will for my life. The second thing I want to let you know, all the times that Jesus was rejected, like from probably childhood all the way till we see him getting crucified on the cross. You know what I see that there's a common thing? Even though people that he cared about, that he loved, rejected him, it didn't stop him from doing the mission and the work that God had for him. And nobody had to remind him who he was. And lean into this. Lean into this, CF student, because this is going to help you as you face rejection in your life. Do you need to be reminded who you are? If someone rejects you today, from one small thing to one big thing, does that define you? If a girl or guy says, hey, you're not pretty enough or good looking enough or smart enough or well enough to be with me or date me, does that become your identity? I'm not saying it's not sad, discouraging, hurtful, all those things. I get that. I get that 100%. But if we're looking to the world, if we're looking to other people to accept us, to love us so much that we're like, man, I must be a good guy. I must be a good girl. I must be amazing. I must be well. I'm, I must be smart. I must be uh, intelligent. I must be strong. I must be brave. I must be courageous. If that's what we are holding on to, if that's what we want to hear and we're trying to get it from everybody else, we are setting ourselves up for failure. Because if you, can you imagine if Jesus had that mentality and Jesus had that lifestyle? Olvídate. Bro, he, he never would have recovered after Judas and Peter. He would have been like, bro, like I just washed your feet. And you're about to sell me out? Like that? Like imagine with Peter. Peter, man, I healed your mother-in-law. You were just fishing. I, I, I brought you into my circle. I told you that I was going to make you a fisherman. And now when I need you most, you're just going to deny me? I must not be who I am. No! No one needed to remind Jesus who he was. But I will tell you this. Many times Jesus did have to go be alone with his heavenly father to be strengthened as he was going to do these hard things. So I ask you, do you know who you are? As a child of God, as a daughter, as a son of the Most High King, that you are forgiven that you are loved, that God has good plans for your life, that God wants to bless you, that yes, God wants you to succeed, that God wants you to have victories, and God has a perfect will for your life. Because if you truly believe and lean on those things, I'm not saying that rejection won't happen. I'm not saying that it won't still hurt. And you have absolutely every right 
to just be sad days and, and you know, lament over these things and mourn over things. But it doesn't have to take who you really are. It doesn't have to define who you really are. And one thing that I love about it is that Jesus did that for us. He lived a life where he was rejected constantly and still kept trusting the Father's promise. And maybe that's my encouragement to some of you today who are listening to this and watching this. Maybe you're going through a lot of rejection right now. It could be at home, sibling, relationships, school, whatever it may be. Lean to trust your God. He knows what he's doing. And just maybe, because of the rejection you're going through right now, maybe God is still doing something amazing that you just haven't seen yet. And you need to hold on to his promises. All right, we're almost, almost out of time. Man, I want to leave you with this because I'm going to be honest, the more I've learned about stress and anxiety, and I'm not a mental health counselor at all, but I have gone to counseling. I have gone to therapy sessions from our Wellsprings that we sponsor here at church and just other friends as well that have recommended it. And I'm going to be honest, maybe, maybe for you, your next step really is, you know, having to have a sit down with maybe your parents or maybe a counselor uh, and maybe having to talk through some of the things of why you are afraid of rejection, why you are struggling with these things. Because I get how sometimes our own thoughts and our own mentality can actually uh, create a barrier for ourselves to actually live out the freedom that God has called us to walk in. So I'm going to leave you with this last point. This last point as we continue to face rejection in our life and there's going to be times where, yes, it's going to be anxious and stressful. Write this down as your final point, okay? Fight the war in your mind daily with God's truth. Fight the war daily in your mind with God's truth. You know, see if students, something comes to my mind as I have seen my own life go through rejection and, and a lot of anxiety and stress, and I just want to encourage you guys with something. We read this book in our 1045 small group a couple of months ago, and it's the book of 2 Corinthians. And if you remember, and maybe you don't, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 is one of the most beautiful and also one of the most hard scriptures that any Christian can ever read. 2 Corinthians literally starts off with this verse. And he says, The God of all comfort comforts us so that we may be able to comfort others. And if you look at that verse, the first verse sounds good, right? Oh man, God comforts me. He is the God of all comfort, rejection, uh, not being accepted, right? Feeling lonely, feeling sad, fe feeling angry, right? All those things God comforts on. But if you read closely, it also says he does it so that not only we would be comforted, but that one day we would comfort those around us. I don't know what stress and anxiety or rejection you are going through. I can only tell you from my experience of having panic attacks, having stressful moments in my life, having rejection in my life that has broken me, I can only tell you that the God of all comfort allowed me to face and go through these things so that maybe I can stand here today and tell you, listen, God does not abandon you and will never reject you, child of God. There is more to your story. There is more to the events that you are going through today. Even though you may not see where the good is in this situation, and I get that, I promise you, the God who is good to you has it all planned out for you. I also want to talk real quick to anybody here that maybe this is your first time and you feel rejected. Like you just live life thinking like, man, like, do people like me? Will people like me? Do I need a change to be like? Listen, I want to let you know that if you come here for the first time or maybe you don't have a relationship with Jesus, I just want to remind you of something. God doesn't reject you. He died for you. The word of God is very clear. God loves us. God loves humanity despite our brokenness, despite our sin, despite us all falling short of the glory of God. There's only one that is perfect, and his name is Jesus Christ. He is the Son of God. And he came to this world to be rejected by us 
so that he could show us how much he loves us and how much he wants to save us, that if anyone believes in him and what he has done, that he has died, rose again from the grave on the third day, and he's alive forevermore, they shall be saved. If that is you today, if you are living life fearing rejection, maybe even living life with trying to get other people to accept you so you can be whole, that's not going to last. But Jesus, Jesus will never reject you and loves you. I want us all to bow our heads and close our eyes right now. And I want us to pray. Listen, if, if, if you need just to trust in the Lord during this season as you're facing rejection, call out to God. Ask God to intervene. We also have incredible resources here as a church from your small group leaders, from your student directors, from your pastors. There's help. There's hope in God. But if you're here and you've never given your life to Jesus and today you are feeling that tug, you're like, man, I don't want to keep living my life in fear of rejection. I want the one person that's never going to reject me. I want to lead you through a prayer. You can give your life to Jesus today and you could be accepted by the one that really matters. Repeat this prayer after me. Don't pray to me. Pray to God. Say, Heavenly Father, I give you my life. I believe in Jesus. I believe he came. I believe he died. And I believe he rose again just for me. Help me, Father, to follow you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, see you soon. Let's make some noise for those that made that decision to give their lives to Jesus, man. The one that doesn't reject us. I love you all so much. I hope this blessed you. Hey, I want to remind you all, next week is our water war. Make sure you come prepared. Ladies and gents, don't wear anything see-through, okay, because you're going to get wet. Don't wear the nice shoes because they're going to get messed up. It's going to be a lot of fun. Invite a friend. I love you guys all so much. See you then.